I'm a DJ in bar, going to decentral, making NFT from Z Bayou, being crypto poor but J Payrick. Good morning, everyone. We'll wait for everybody to get seated. Yes, so um, really excited to be here and share this space with you all today. My name is Rakia Reynolds. I'm the founder and executive officer of Sky Blue Media. We are a multimedia, multicultural communications agency, and we work um, around the, the areas of equity and inclusion and storytelling for the world of Web3. So I'm so excited to be here with Sonia, Kitty, and Carissa, who I just met, but I am already fans of because I've watched all of their YouTube videos. Y'all should check them out. They'll make sure that you can um, have all of their accurate information at the end so that you can follow them. But we're really excited to be talking about diversity in the space of Web3. So I'm gonna jump right on in. Would love for you all to introduce yourselves to the lovely people in this room, talk about your business, and then also, if you wanna just give your quick definition of Web3. Hello everyone, I'm Sonia. I am the founder and CEO of Orbis86 and excited to be here with uh, all the lovely ladies on the panel. And woo, go Web3 and go women in Web3. So I am the founder of Orbis86. Orbis86 as a project, uh, we are focused on using storytelling as a vehicle to educate, enable, empower communities around the globe. So we are looking at uh, using stories and uh, bringing the power of storytelling and immortalizing these small moments in each person's lives that are just going to get buried with them if they don't go out and tell their story. On the impact side, we have a Cynthia with us uh, who is working purely on impact. She works with the KPAR Foundation. And uh, we are looking at uh, building out a curriculum for, um, for training the minorities and the disenfranchised populations, communities around the globe, and uh, training them on life skills that they can go and actually utilize at their workplace. So that's me. Um, so Web3 has so many different definitions, but to me, the one that excites the most is where Web3 will help uh, take down the monolithic organizations that we have. And since a lot of us are focused on, um, well, the world is focused on money, the way I put Web3 is, you know, Web2 created a, a lot of billionaires, right? And I think Web3 is where the community will get richer. So instead of creating Web3 billionaires, you'll probably have a lot of Web3 millionaires being created because everyone's coming together, helping each other, and we all help each other succeed. That to me is the biggest promise of Web3 that I look forward to. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Um, hi guys, I'm Kitty Like a Cat. I am founder of NFT Girl Gang, and I'm also head of creative for Avalanche. This is my second week on the job. Um, it's been an eight or nine month journey. Started as a art director at Meta, uh, dove in head first into crypto, and now I'm working full-time in crypto. So it's been a really amazing journey. Um, met a lot of amazing people, uh, including these amazing women up here. Uh, my entire thing has been um, just creating my own opportunities and figuring out crypto with my friends. I created a blockchain solutions company and we built the world's first physical NFT gallery uh, last February and sold over 90 ETH. And it was the first time where we saw this was working. Uh, I've been an artist for eight years, and I was watching other artists be able to create NFT projects and get what I feel artists are, are worth, and, and being able to see living artists making a lot of money. I made a joke to my friend the other day. Um, it was really cool to see a piece of art sell for $69.420 million, and my first thought was, oh my gosh, this guy is alive. He's actually alive making money as an artist. And so I've been really excited about this space. And when I started, I've been traveling and hanging out with a lot of men and living with them and, and was really just, you know, where are the women at? How can I help them? And how can I bring more women into the space? And it's really exciting now, you know, a year later to be sitting up here with, with you ladies and, and seeing just more and more on each conference. And every time, you know, I just like to talk to other women and, and kind of see how they're doing 
What struggles are they facing? And how can I connect them with someone to help them? Um, which kind of bridges into my definition of Web3. You know, There's the technology behind it and the ease of use and the fact that I can send somebody money and buy something within seconds of any amount versus needing to go through all of the institutional institutions in any, any sort of roadblock. Um, but it's also, I, I feel it's a space where with those roadblocks removed, there's a lot of creative freedoms and ways for people to grow and build communities and build funds and, and really work quickly in a space with technology that provides that speed. So Web3 is exciting to me and I am really excited about the communities and, and the really amazing people building in the space. There, you guys are amazing, so I'm really privileged to be up here with you guys. My, my story is not as interesting. <laughs> um, I'm Carissa Winnett. I am the VP of Ops Newly um, for NFT Genius. NFT Genius built the uh, viral uh, IP ballers, and they also built the Gaia Marketplace. Gaia Marketplace is built on the Flow blockchain. Um, Gaia Marketplace is looking to be one of the largest marketplaces that has mass adoption. We're looking to find solutions that enable people to have that simplistic ease to onboard and feel safe. Crypto is very scary. Blockchain is very scary. We're trying to take the average person and, and show them the way. You can't just open a door anymore. You have to physically walk people through the door and show them the opportunities that exist for them. And we're firm believers in not only just opening the door, but walking people through the door to show them there's nothing terrifying that they should be embracing this. And we want to bring web three to the world in a way that makes sense that shows them that they're not just buying a picture they're buying something that brings their communities together or something more tangible with bigger brands in, in terms of utility that they can use a lot of the utilities kind of become stagnant in web three so we want to start to showcase that there can be much more when you buy an nft or when you buy something off of our marketplace than what's currently being offered and my definition of web three Community. Um, web one was decentralization. We had static web pages that everybody went to. Web two was huge co co companies making large sums of money off of us. Web three is us breaking off as a community and saying, hey, we want a piece of that too because we helped you build that. Our pictures, our voice, our thoughts, our inspirations, our hopes, our dreams built your platforms and you're monetizing it and you're selling our data and you're selling us. We should have a piece of that as well. So Web3 to me means community, and it means us taking back the power to be the best versions of ourselves. Ooh, Carissa is over here speaking truth to power. So one, I just want to give snaps and claps to all of you for being here. We're going to jump right in. Carissa, I'm going to pick up where you sort of segued, where you talked about it's a scary place. And, you know, Sonia, I want to turn it over to you and ask you with you know, the, the language, the lexicon, the vernacular that we're using in the world of Web3, sometimes it feels like a scary place because it's learning a new language in addition to all of the other things that devs are learning in the space of world in Web3. But for you, just thinking about general communities and all of the new language that they have to learn in order to adapt to the world of Web3, do you think that it will hinder some communities or do you think that there are ways that we can be more equitable in our approach to diversify some of the language that we're using in the world of Web3? Well, thanks for that uh, lovely question, Rakia, because if you're talking about mass adoption, uh, understanding whether the masses are ready for adoption is the first stage. So let me ask uh, folks in this room, how many of you know the term HODL? So there are still over 50% who don't know, right? And this is just one of the many acronyms and lexicons that have emerged in the space of Web3. It's, it stands for hold on to dear life. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going to get into the definition, but let me ask this, okay? Um, we all know that there are people in the world who don't speak English. What percentage of the world population do you think doesn't speak English at all? Anyone wants to throw in some random numbers? Sorry? 80? Anyone else? 70? Well, it's actually somewhere between the two. It's about 75% of the population in the globe, 75% of 7.753 billion people who don't even speak English at all. 
that in itself is the first barrier to adoption. Wow. Right? Forget about the lexicons, but just think about when you talk about Web3 being a place for everyone, how is it going to be a place for everyone when they, when they can't even understand what they're reading? Hell, I speak fluent English, right? And I am pretty good at reading, and I still don't understand a lot of the stuff that's being said. Like staking, yielding, farming, what exactly is happening? What am I farming, right? I, well, I have understood it now, but the thought is that it's not just about Web3 specific vocabulary, but it's also about the adoption that we're talking about. Uh, so Carissa and Kitty, you brought up some fantastic points, right? Like Kitty, you, Carissa, you spoke about the promise of DeFi, right? Like how DeFi could actually, decentralized finance could actually solve the issues of intermediaries. Here's the thing, of the total bankable population in the world, 1.8 billion people do not get access to banks because the banks think that these are not a good fit to be our customers. And these people, because they don't have access to banking, they lose out on all the opportunities that a lot of us in this room take for granted. Because now, payments cannot be made. So for a person sitting in Nigeria, getting payments made in US dollars is a huge headache. And a lot of the employers will not work with them, even if they're off-sourcing off, uh, some of their work, because payment is a problem. And these people now in the world of Web3 are transacting over Solana wallets, Ethereum wallet. And for them, $100 a month is a big amount, right? So even for $100, the banks are not going to really treat them as their customers. So if we are really talking about bringing on board all of these people onto Web3 and using this promise of Web3 to enable, empower all these masses, meeting them where they are, that is important. You know, it has to be intentional. So one of the things, I've, I have seen some projects work on it, and what I also personally do, I am from India, so you know, I speak three languages. And it is important that when we go and sit down with people, we don't just create a way to communicate which is easy. We generally, you know, anytime we're explaining something to someone, people say that explain it like you're explaining to a third grader, yes. right? So that is one thing that we have to do with Web3. Simplify it so that third graders can understand. The second thing we need to do is actually go to school and teach kids about Web3 because that is the generation, that is the population that is going to drive the mass adoption. Millennials, et cetera, will jump on ship, but that is the population that can drive it. And the third most important thing is when we reach out to people, we have to talk to them in not just terms that they'll understand, but also a language that they can understand. So it is going to be a huge hindrance to answer your question, but we have to be intentional about it. And if each one does our piece, and when we go and talk to people, we understand where they are at, rather than expecting them to meet us where we are at, that could make a lot of difference. I love that. So simplify, educate, and meet people where they are. Thank you so much for that, Sonia. Kitty, I'm gonna turn it on over to you. Um, because it, this is such a rich conversation. You know, um, you talked about your background with, it, with NFT Girl Gang and being a creative director, creative director for Avalanche right now, which is super awesome. So you know that we need diversity in the world of Web3 and the metaverse. And, and you spoke recently at NFT Miami and you were talking about consumers and brands. So not only from a consumer perspective, but the people that are actually working to build and to be architects of the metaverse and be architects of the world, you know, in the world of Web3. Do you have any advice for us on any steps that can be taken, things that you've experienced, things that you've heard on steps that can be taken to, to encourage and build a network of diverse talent? Yeah, for sure. First of all, I want to say that was like one of the most badass answers I've heard at a, at a conference. Like, dropping mics over here. <laughs> like, that was incredible. Um, yeah, that was, that was incredible and, and very, very well said. Um, I just, I like blanked out like, in awe. <laughs> um, but so, I mean, bringing diversity in, in it's, it's all about, like you said, meeting people where they're at and being willing to have those conversations. Um, you know, sometimes I get a little nervous speaking about like men and women in Web3. And I get nervous about saying the wrong thing or, you know, having just like an awkward moment. And 
I really have been putting myself out there and having these conversations and um, you know making sure to be respectful of, of people and their and their emotions and their feelings and and what they care about um, to really try to get those conversations of diversity going like for example last night I was sitting with a group of guys at a table speaking you know oh I'm speaking on this diversity panel tomorrow and the, one of the guys said you know I'd be really interested and listening to what is the feminine side of crypto and, and hearing women define what that is. And, I, and they said, you know, but I don't know if I'm allowed to sit there if it's a women's panel. I don't know if they want me there. And so I think a lot of it is just is teaching this allyship and it's not a, a them versus us or you know, boys versus girls. It's, it's just creating those situations where people can come together as friends and humans and feel comfortable to ask questions and know that it's not a it's not a big deal. Like if you have a question, if you want to know about the femininity of crypto, and you feel like that's crazy, ask a woman. It's not. It's a fun thing to talk about, and it's a way to just have these meaningful conversations um, and see eye to eye. And like when I first, I think at DecentralCon last year, I remember you know that's when a lot of my friends were starting these companies in Web three, and they'd be so excited to tell me, you know, Kitty, I. I have this amazing team, like we did it, we got funding. We're, we're, and I'm like, that's so exciting. Like, do you have any women on your team? And they'd say, no. <laughs> and I'd be like, do you want any women on your team? And they'd be like, yeah, like where, where are they? How do I find them? And I was like, all right, I'm gonna figure out that piece. You know, come back to me <laughs> and I'll figure out how to get them. Um, but it's just being aware and, and talking and there's people out there um, that want diversity and one point I wanted to make today was, you know, if you build a product and your entire team all looks the same and is the same, you'll be building a product for people like you, which is great. You know, you're solving a problem that you find important. But if you bring a diverse group of people on your team and have a diverse group of ideas, you're solving a problem for everybody that fits everybody. And you're making sure that that problem is diverse and, and you're you know, just making something that changes the world versus a small amount. Um, so I, yeah, just having good conversations with friends and being aware and of how to make larger change. I, I love that, and and it brings me to um, a conversation that I was having with Carissa and um, Kitty. You're absolutely right. Like being in places like this, being with people, having conversations. You know we're all having different conversations on stages in Discord or via Twitter spaces, but it's actually um, listening and showing up for conversations and engaging and making sure that you are meeting people where they are. Um, so my, my next question is for Carissa, and we were talking in the green room, and I was like, one of my favorite discussions is, you know, when people talk about respectability politics, and now we're getting into the world of identity politics, when we think about avatars, and we think about the metaverse. And I recently had a discussion with someone that I really want Carissa to take away is that, um, you know, I, I was talking to a white woman, and she was like, can I use um, this black woman as my avatar? And you know there were there was much discussion about that. And as a black woman, I was like, "Girl, no! Like, be who you are." And and I get where she was coming from. She was like, "Hey, Rakia, I'm proud of the features. I'm proud of the skin tones. I'm proud of the diversity." And for me, my personal was, "Girl, no." And so, Carissa, my question to you is: After "Girl, no," do you feel that allowing people to represent the best version of themselves through an avatar? will lead to a whole new set of identity politics in the metaverse. So I encourage people to represent the best version of themselves, but that doesn't mean as a Latina, half Latina, half white person that I'm going to take on the attributes of a beautiful black woman. I'm just not going to do it because I understand that that is not my identity. Now, we have other ways to show the best versions of ourselves as an avatar, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a person. I mean, look at some of the projects that are being shown as, as profile pics now. That is the best version of those people. Who are we to say that that's wrong and who are we to say that's right? But when you're taking a culture that you may or may not fully understand 
the difficulties that we face day to day, it's slightly insulting. So it does, in, it does incite some political issues. But as people in Web3, I think we have the opportunity to set the stage to educate and to help people understand what our problems and our plights are and why some of this cultural appropriation is absurd to some degree and how some of it may actually help, and I don't mean help, but I do mean help make it acceptable in the workplace. I used to work for a very corporate company years and years and years ago, and, I, and one of the black women came with her natural black hair, and she was sent home. Why? It wasn't within our HR hair standards. What? Yes, and she was sent home. She said that's not how you can... Now, if I wear, and I have very, very curly hair, if I wear my hair curly like that, I won't be sent home. Why? Because it's, it's different. Your plight is different than mine. But the moment I understand it, I'm willing to fight for your plight. Hey, my hair is super curly. Why, why, does she, why is, isn't she allowed to show her natural hair? And I am. Once we can educate each other and, exp and really truly understand the differences and why they're beautiful and why we need to help get people from point A to point B, the, more, the less likely people are to, culture, to appropriate other people's cultures, respect it, highlight it for the beautiful thing that it is, but leave it where it belongs. With the people that, that it, there's, they're struggling and they're fighting just to be accepted in a world that it doesn't always accept them. I love that. Um, for those of you, you should Google the Crown Act, which was passed. So for anybody that needs to understand how people are showing up in the workplace, Google the, the Crown Act. If, we're, if we are able to take um, questions from the audience, Mitch, where are you? Let me know, because I think there are a few hands up. And I will say, disclaimer, um, we only have 30 minutes, and you can be talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion for days and days and days, because we will not solve anything in 30 minutes. Um, it is about belonging and mattering, so taking it a step further. Sonia, really quickly, I would love, because I think we only have a few minutes left, you talked about uh, a project, and you said it's not just about you know, how people look. Can you talk to us um, a little more about some of the projects that you're working on in the world of Web3 to make spaces more equitable? And then I'll open it up, because we only have a few more minutes, to Kitty and Carissa, if you all want to just jump in just to talk about your specific projects. So I already mentioned that, you know, for Orbis 86 as a project, uh, DEI is a core, one of our core values, you know, how do we get more people? One of the things we are doing is uh, our NFTs start minting next month, and uh, we have collaborated with about 50 musicians, and we are giving away the full 3D file, not just a PFP, but uh, we would be dropping at least two NFTs, one is the music clip, and the other one is the, the file itself, the PFP and the blend file. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to shill my project, but where I'm getting at is one of the ways we are trying to enable bringing people in is the, the idea of dropping two NFTs is if I get two NFTs, I keep one, but then I give an NFT to another person that I think should be onboarded to the community and benefit from the community. And that is important because, you know, again, if we talk about Web3 trying to bring in everyone, how are people going to get into Web3, into communities, if you have to, even on the day that a good community is, uh, you know, like uh, their minting goes on, you have to pay at least 300 or $400 to get into that community. That is not very accessible. So you have to think of how your community can impact others who are willing to help. So when we started the project, we thought that, okay, you know, our, our collection represents different races, ethnicities, and we thought we'll focus purely on the DI group. But then we realized that the group that we want to impact, see, globally, first of all, our Web3 community and the NFT community, we might think that it is a very large community. But in like Feb and March, there were only 27,000 wallets that actually transacted on OpenSea. 27,000 people is not a large number, right, in the grand scheme of things. So uh, we realized that, okay, we cannot uh, just, you know, narrow it down to DEI. And the other thing was that a lot of the folks that we want to impact are not there in Web3, right? So, but the people who are there in Web3, thankfully, 90% plus of those folks, at least personally that I've met, they are interested in making an impact. They just don't know what to do. So what we thought was we bring together all these people and then lead an impact revolution. So we want to be the voices leading the change, 
right? We want to, we are already partnering with some nonprofits that work in that area and all the NFT projects do, so I'm not going to uh, specifically work on that. But the thought is that, hey, even if, uh, you know, you might not belong to one of those communities, but like Carissa said, if you understand what are the problems that they go through. So as I, so Cynthia, uh, you know, who's working with me, and she's a beautiful black woman, and I was telling her that I, I don't like to talk about uh, the, you know, the problems of the black community as much because I feel like an imposter doing that. But then I was telling her how I read Roots, and she was like, "Girl, you have read Roots." <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't done that. And there was Corey who's also black. Like, I haven't done that either. So she said, don't feel like that because being a black woman, I can tell you that I appreciate you thinking about it from an empathetic standpoint than just, uh, you know, glancing and talking about it superficially. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to rush through this. Kitty, I want you to, you fill out your chair. You are so confident. And I love how you are showing up for the world of women. Talk to us really quickly about things that you're doing in your spaces to create more spaces for women. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, with the NFT Girl Gang, I essentially created it just with my friends to create a space where we can come together. And I've been kind of using the Disney method of being slow, you know, and really figuring out what I want to do with Girl Gang. And so I've decided I want to be able to speed up the process. So it's taken me a year to figure out how to create a company. It's taken me a year to get a job in crypto. I want to help women do that super quick. They don't have to go to 20 conferences. They don't have to get up on all these scary stages. They can come into Girl Gang. I can help them meet the right people and create this, this community of, of speed to get more women into crypto. And so... With that, I'm having a baddie summit uh, June 20th at NFT NYC, celebrating the last you know, amazing eight months. Would love to have you guys there. Um, and having another panel, actually all-female panel, and uh, creating an accelerator and headhunting program for women to get into Web3. Awesome. And Carissa, I want you to take us out, but then don't leave the stage yet. Let everyone know where they can find you. I know, Mitch, we only have one more minute. Carissa, take it away, and then everybody shout out their handles and places people can find you. Same question. Yep. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm actively like I spend hours talking to our team about how to bring more diversity into our team, and a lot of what I do is I'm a woman and I'm one of three on our team, and so I I'm very focused on not just getting women on our team, but we're solving a problem for the world. We're solving a problem for many different kinds of people. So a lot of what I, I spend my time doing is, is is really seeking out that diversity and taking people who don't actually have experience in Web3 and finding out what their experience is and how that translates into Web3. And I think that's the biggest problem that we're facing is everybody wants someone who has experience in Web3. They want five years of experience in Web3 and they want this and they want that and it does not exist. Your job as the people creating these companies, your job as the people who are building these empires is to educate the people who want to be in Web3 and help them get in. It is, you're not gonna hire diversity, you're not gonna find diversity, you have to seek it open the door, walk them through the door, and help them be successful because they're going to help you be successful and you're going to solve problems for the world, not just problems for one demographic. You better go ahead and walk it like you're talking. What's your handle, Carissa? <laughs> um, um, it's MMA girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up boxing, so yeah. <laughs> Badass, badass. Um, yeah, I'm at NFT Girl Gang on all socials, nftgirlgang.com, because I was an early adopter and I have a .com. Um, at It's Kata and everything else. But yeah, nftnycbaddies.com is our um, amazing baddie summit info. So yeah, excited to see you guys there. Awesome, Sonia. And I'm at Orbis86, and uh, we are also on the mezzanine floor if people want to come and meet. And we are going to be at NFT NYC too. Yeah. So we are also there we'll, at consensus. We'll be there. <laughs> awesome. We are, we are all there. I think Kitty and I are on another panel at NFT NYC. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I'm on, th no, I'm not on the same panel as you. I'm on another one. I guess we'll all be at NFT NYC. My name is Rakia Reynolds. I'm at R-A-K-I-A-R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S on all the platforms. And I'll see y'all at NFT NYC as well. We're doing a, an event at the New York Stock Exchange on June 22nd. Um, for a bunch of Web3 companies. So we'll invite all of y'all in this room. Have a great day, y'all. Thank, Thank, Thank you.